Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 19 Ajax Road to Glory. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for the love and support on the channel. And as always guys, at the start of these episodes, we're quickly going to recap on the previous. And the previous episode was packed full of energy, full of goals and full of highlights. So hopefully episode 9 guys, you really all did enjoy because there was plenty of goals and plenty of highlights for you to watch. But of course, the first game was a big game in the Eredivisie. It was against AZ, who have found themselves second in the Eredivisie this year. They were coming up against those at the top spot, Ajax. And we started off great. We went up 3-0. And I was thinking, wow, we're cruising this. Thought it would have been a little bit more difficult. But what we have to remember is, and I keep forgetting it, it's legendary. And within 5-10 minutes, a lot can change. And the game actually ended 3-2. They did score a second goal late on into the game. But unfortunately, couldn't find a third for their half. But for us, luckily enough, we held out and we got the 3-2 win result, which I was very happy about. But then the second game was also a very big one. It was against a team called SC Heravine. They had actually moved up to third place in the Eredivisie. And by the time we were playing them after two draws, they were down to fifth. But still, not a team to mess with and not a team to doubt. Because they did have one of the best defensive teams teams in the league. I think when it popped up, they were around third or fourth, only letting in five goals in the whole of the Eredivisie so far. So I was thinking, do you know what? It's going to be a tight and difficult game. But how wrong was I? We absolutely dominated them. I even called the episode Men Against Boys because that's exactly how it felt. It was like men against 10 year olds. We dominated them and beat them 8-1. And that is our best result ever on FIFA 19, even through the Liverpool career mode, the Ajax road to glory, the Santiago Munez going for goal, we have never scored eight goals and had a goal difference in one game of seven. So we absolutely dominated. And I hope to do the same in today's episode because we are about to play our third game in the Champions League against SL Benfica. Now, we've played against Benfica in the Liverpool career mode. And the one thing I remember is Benfica's keeper was on fire. We had 22 shots, 18 of them being on target, and we only managed to score one goal against Benfica. And then in the second half or the second leg against Benfica, I played it tactically and went out there for a nil-nil draw. I wanted the draw because I had to rotate the team quite a lot and I wanted to keep players rested. But if there is a slight chance that AK Athens, who are about to play FC Bayern Munich, if they can get a draw or a win, we can possibly stay top of the Champions League group that we're in right now and we will have a bit of a lead on Bayern. Because as you can see, we're both currently on four points. We have already played Bayern. We went 2-0 down. Four back and managed to get a 2-2 draw out of that game, which I was very happy about. But today's episode is a big one, guys. We've got Benfica in the Champions League for the third game. And we also have Fenoid in the Eredivisie, which are another top club in the league. So hopefully we can bag another three points there. Quickly want to touch up on a subject, guys. There was a comment, and a few of you did like it, and I appreciate this, guys. One thing I'm going to say is if you're ever scrolling through the comment section and you see a comment and you're like, you know what? That's a good comment. Make sure you hit the thumbs up just so I can see it. But it's from a person called Ryan TV, and he said 13 dot dot 35. So at 13 minutes 35 in the video, what was that noise? And I've replied with, was it around the 1333 mark? And basically at 1333, there is a big static noise. Now, a few of you guys will know that I've recently changed the microphone. And I thought it was down to me changing the microphone, trying out new settings and stuff like that. I'm starting to think it's not. I'm starting to possibly think that it's the recording device that I use. Now, I've contacted the company that actually make the device and I'm waiting to hear back from them. But I've got a feeling it might be that product that I have that may well be causing the issue. If this is the case, I'm going to go back and forth with them and try and figure out if we can fix it. If not, I'll have to look at getting a brand new one. But if you do hear any static or anything in the videos in the next coming days, guys, I can only apologise. I'm going to try and cut out the majority of it. I can hear when I'm editing it. And if it's not too much of an important part of the video, I will cut it out. But it makes it very difficult, especially if I score a goal and I'm screaming and then there's a big static. And a few of you guys I did point out a couple of episodes ago in the Ajax career mode, I scored a goal where I crossed it in and with Tadic, I'd done it on the volley. And as I went, I said like Van der Beek crosses it and Tadic is there, shoot. And as I said shoot, it went shoot, 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 shoot. It kind of like, it buffered and it repeated the word. And this is my problem. I thought it was the microphone and that was on the old microphone. I thought it's getting a bit on now and technology as it gets older, it does start to give up. Now I've got a new microphone. I can't be sure it was the old microphone. I think it may well be, as I say, the product that I use to record these episodes. So... 
I've emailed them. I'm going to see what happens and I'll make sure to get it fixed very soon, guys. But Ryan TV, thank you for pointing that out. And I did leave a comment down below saying on your comment that it probably was just static. I will see what I can do in the next coming episodes. But as I say, let's dive back into this episode. Two big games. And unfortunately, with Legendary kicking in, guys. And of course, we don't have a big squad at Ajax. We are starting to struggle because when you look at the lineup I am putting out against Benfica, it's not fully fit. And it's got a few players in there that wouldn't normally start. But this is the lineup. We've got CM Diong up top in the striker position. Nerez, Labiad and Tadic in the central attack and midfield roles. Van der Beek and Eating a little bit more deeper in the central defensive midfield. Blind, Shears, Umkeno and Majrui at the back with Onana in goal. So you wouldn't normally see Van der Beek in the central midfield role or the CDM role. You wouldn't normally see CM De Jong up top as the striker. Labiad's not one that normally starts. We tend to not want to play daily blind at left back. Shears doesn't normally get in the team. And this is the problem right now, guys. Because we're playing so many games, our players aren't fit. So our two normal central defensive midfielders, which are Frankie De Jong and Ruben Loftus-Cheek, they're not fully fit. They're nowhere near fully fit. So I cannot play them. And that's why Van der Beek and Eating are playing in their place. But hopefully with this team, we can still do a job. Still get a decent result. And hopefully beat Benfica. Because we could do a bag in another three points in the Champions League. And if Athens can hold Bayern to a draw or even win the game, then it pushes us away from Bayern. And we start getting a bit of a gap at the top of our group. Because after this game, we will be halfway through the group stages obviously we've played all three play all three teams now then it's going to rotate and weave if we played them at home we're going to play them now away and if we played them away we're now going to play them at home we are going to play in our black kit hopefully as well guys just like you know you should be seeing this on the 7th the 7th should i say of january if you are that is monday i will be uploading the liverpool cream mode tomorrow on tuesday and the reason i'm telling you that is because episode 40 which means we will be looking over the fan objective so if you are looking forward to that make sure you drop a comment down below but let's go ahead and get into this game against Benfica we are at the Johan Cruyff Arena we are looking for another victory we've just come off the back end of an 8-1 victory against Heravine I would love it if we could do the same against Benfica well we know from the Liverpool career mode that Benfica have a brick wall in goal it is not an easy keeper to beat I can't even remember his name I just know he was very very difficult very difficult indeed although when I look at it there I'm not sure they had the same keeper in goal but it is going to be CM Diong for his first half for Ajax he is going to be the man to kick off this first half let's get it kicked off and see what we can do in this first 45 minute period Tadic waiting for Neres to get round. Nice ball up to Neres. Here comes Neres. Looks to dance his man. Nice, he's got into the middle. Tadic is there. Bends one. It's one nil. I'm sorry, but it is definitely not the Benfica keeper that we faced in the Liverpool career mode. That is probably the quickest goal we've ever scored. Look at this. Nice little bit of skill from Neres. Squares it across to Tadic. Onto his left foot. Little finesse shot. We're 2 0 up after like 2 minutes 20. That is ridiculous. Our first break from kickoff, and it ends up in the back of the net. Benfica have definitely not got the same keeper between the sticks, and it's out to Labiad. Neres, CM Diong, out wide now to Labiad, who's pushing forward. There goes Labiad. Keep going, Labiad, all on your own, son. Referee, it's going to be a penalty. Ten minutes in, we've scored in the second minute. And now we've got a penalty in the 10th. And is it going to be a card? I mean, he slid in. I was running straight. I actually tried to move away from the tackle instead of just going in for it. And it is a penalty. And it is going to be Dusan Tadic to step up. Can he score his second goal? It's a yellow card as well for their player. His second goal against Benfica. Tadic! He's denied. He is denied. And that is legendary for you right there, guys. Still got Labiad in the middle. CM on. Playing it through now to Labiad. Round the corner to Neres. He is taken out, but Neres is there and finishes it for the second. And I'll tell you what, this Benfica defenders, the back four, cannot handle us right now. Again, Labiad taken out just before the box. It was nearly another penalty. Look at this, Labiad breaks through, pushes forwards, taken out again. Luckily enough, David Neres is there to put it past their keeper, but I'll tell you what. They've got to stop sliding in and doing dangerous tackles like that because they're going to give away three or four penalties in this game. Plays it back to Eating. 
eating into the middle to Van der Beek. If Van der Beek can make himself a little bit of space here, let's go up to Neres. Neres into the middle. CM De Jong back to Van der Beek. Van der Beek makes it three. Makes it three. Donny Van der Beek is becoming a player that has to start in this Ajax team. He has to start. He's scoring so many goals. And he's not even playing in his main role, which is, of course, a central attacking midfielder. He's playing deeper in the central defensive midfield position. He's still getting forwards. And what a strike from Donny van der Beek. In off the crossbar. And we are 3-0 up against Benfica. This is so one-sided right now. Here comes Majru. And I tell you what, their left-back is well out of position. Try and play this on the inside. It's Tadic. Through the middle now. CM De Jong is there, it's four. I just, I don't even know what to say. I mean, we won 8-1 in the last game. And I said at the start of this episode, that is the most goals I've ever scored with a goal difference of seven. If we do the same in the second half against Benfica, we're going to have a goal difference of eight. CM De Jong nearly, once again, nearly fouled by their number seven. Sliding in, if he catches him there, that's got to be a red card and it's got to be another penalty. Ball into the middle. Let's stay on this. They're coming forwards. Ball into the middle. Let's get there. Cleared out, but not good enough. Got to get up. Van der Beek blocks. Got to get up, lads. Got to get up. Oh, no, no, a big save. Oh, they've pulled this back for a free kick. What happened there? What happened there? I'd like to see this as a replay right before half time. It was only meant to be three minutes added on. We're going to be into the sixth minute. What is going on? Are we going to see a replay of this? We're not. Let's get a man on every post. Come on. We don't want them scoring now. They're going to lay this off, aren't they? Of course they are. No, he's gone for goal. And it's in the back of the net. Good goal from Jonas. I mean, can you just take a second, guys, to look in the top left corner? Three minutes added on. We're into six minutes added on here. Referee, something's got to be done there, you know. Oh, oh Nana, he's got to do better. He's so close. But Jonas does score. And right before half time, as soon as we kick off here, the referee's got to blow for half time. He still hasn't blown him. We're seven minutes in here. That is absolutely mental. There's probably another thing that FIFA needs to fix. If three minutes are added on, you can't play as seven minutes in. That is ridiculous. But 4 one up. I couldn't ask for any more from the lads. I think all I need to do... I think I need to jump back into the second half. Play on until the 55th, maybe even the 60th minute with the squad we've got out now. And then maybe look at making some changes just to keep the fresh legs going. Because realistically... We're dominating against Benfica, but they have just scored this second half, especially in this next 10 minutes. It might be another story. They may well come out and look for some goals. So let's make sure we get this ball and put another one in the back of their net and keep this game put to bed. Now there's around the corner to Labiad. Labiad laying it off to Daly Blind, who's pushing on now. Go into the middle now for CM De Jong. Who's looking to push on now. We've got Neres. CM De Jong. Back to CM De Jong to finish it. It's 5-1. Tell you what, considering this is CM De Jong's first start for Ajax, we brought him back from loan in an attempt to sell him to bring Giovanni, Giovanni Simeone, mixing both of his uh, first name and surname there. We brought him back to try and sell him. It's his first start for Ajax and he scored two goals. Showing us why he deserves to get in the team. They're coming forwards now, Kano, you've got to get on him. They're coming forwards. Let's get in there. And Shears has, well, pulled, Shears has put a foot in. He's got the ball. But they've pulled it back for a free kick. We're going to have to defend this. But maybe get a counter-attack going. Ball into the middle. Daly Blind to get this. Flicked on. It's back of the net. It's onside as well. That was well worked from Benfica. Salvio scores. It was a flicked on head that I thought we probably should have got there. And it's 5-2. It was a well worked free kick. Got to do better there. Got to do better there. Daily Blind has got to get to his man, but it's flicked on, and he's got it on the volley. Onana makes himself nice and big, but unfortunately can't get to the ball, and it's 5-2. Let's try and make this 6-2 and put this game to bed now. Push it on nicely now. Let's play that around the corner to Van der Beek. Van der Beek through on goal. Van der Beek puts it back. Dolberg makes it 6-2. Kasper Dolberg is the man. He's been on the pitch for 10 minutes. And he's already got himself a goal. He must have easily scored 12, maybe even 13 goals 
this season already throughout all competitions. Well, you tell youngsters in that Van der Beek, nice run the through time. there. Pulls it back into Casper Dolby, well, onto his left foot, and he, scores. and he just places it home. Cleared away. We've been waiting to find Let's out. just now chase this down, lads. They're coming forwards. Oh, look at that. They're going to be in behind here. Let's get in there. Big strike. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Benfica not going quietly here. Rafa absolutely smashed that one. Oh, Nana couldn't even blink before that ended up in the back of the net. Well, when we see this again, I thought it was all over. Beautiful ball over the top. Takes a touch. Bang. Oh, Nana has pulled off some incredible saves recently. But over the last two games, he's been very, very disappointing. He had that horrible goal where he just threw it out and give the ball away. And now we were 6 2 up. It's now 6 3. And although we are going to win this game, to let three goals in, it's just not good enough. And especially that last goal, we've got to do a lot better. But we bag another three points. We beat Benfica, who are an absolutely unbelievable team. We beat them 6 3. And we played them with probably a C squad. It was very, very rotated. Didn't play the best team we could have. CM Dion getting two goals. We also went 1-0 down, so realistically to come back, we went 1-1, then it went to 2-1, and then we just took over. Right guys, and here we are, back at the central, ready to face off against Fenoid. Now before we face off against them, I just want to show you this quick start. I quickly looked at the calendar and was absolutely amazed by this. Can you believe in the last three games, so that's the game that we've just played in today's episode, and the two games that we played in episode 9, 23 goals have been scored. You can see there the AZ game, five goals were scored. The game against SC Herovine, nine goals were scored. And of course, the game against Benfica that just ended 6-3, another nine goals were scored. So in the last three games amongst both teams, so either opposition, 23 goals have been scored. That is madness and that is a lot of highlights. And I'm hoping against Fenoid we can do the same. I'm hoping for four plus goals because I'd like to keep a clean sheet, but if we could score more than four goals, I would be over the moon. I mean, if seven goals are scored in this game, it means over the last four games, 30 goals have been scored, which is absolutely mental. I can't believe that. And also something that I noticed is, apart from PSV, every team we have played in the last coming weeks, when we beat them, it just goes downhill for them, as I say, apart from PSV. So we've played PSV and we beat them, They've stayed in second, that's great. AZ were once in second place. We beat them, they're now down to sixth. SC Herovine, they were in fourth place. They're now down to eighth. Fortuna, they were fifth. They're now down to tenth. Every team that we play, I mean, there's another team that we've played. In fact, another two teams that we've played. VVV Venlo and FC Emmen were two of the teams that we played at the very start of this season. And they're down in 18th and 17th. So realistically, the teams that we beat start to drop off and really fall down the league. So if we beat Fenoy today, which hopefully we should, they should start dropping down the league as well. We're yet to play, I don't even know how you pronounce these names, but I'll try it, the Grafschap and FC Ultrich. I think that's probably how you pronounce them. I'm going to go with it, but when we get closer to the time, I will definitely learn how to pronounce those teams. But we've got Fenoid up next in fifth place. And finally, we get our normal starting 11 back. The strongest starting 11 we can put out against any opposition in the Eredivisie or Champions League. We've got Kasper Dolberg up top in the striker role. Neres, Tadic and Ziyech in the central attack and midfield roles. De Jong and Loftus-Cheek a little deeper in the central defensive midfield. Vova, Blind, De Litt and Mukele at the back with Onana in goal. And I'm super excited to get into this game. Just quickly want to touch up again, guys. You will have seen in the previous episode, I showed a clip of Andre Onana going up to an 83. He was right at the end of being an 82, and he went up to an 83. You can see there now, he's back down to pretty much being an 82. This is unfortunately because of a FIFA glitch. I did leave it in the previous episode, and I will be in the next week, probably Thursday or Friday this week, I will record it. And that is going to be a video called Hashtag Change Career Mode. And it's going to be talking about things that need to be changed in FIFA for probably FIFA 20. Because I don't think a lot's going to get changed in career mode for FIFA 19. So things we want to see in FIFA 20. Things we need to be removed. Things we want to come back that may have been in previous FIFAs. 
glitches that are going wrong. So the one thing we're going to say is a few of you have said like, Brad, you know, I got Neymar on loan. If you have any things or any problems that have gone wrong in FIFA 19 career mode, screenshot it and send it to me. Now, my Twitter is down below in the description. Go and follow me. If you don't have Twitter, create one. It's free. Follow me and then you can DM me, which is a direct message. You can send me a message and screenshot me problems. It might be players that have started to go up ratings but are actually dropping. It might be a load of games in one week. It might be four or five games that you've got to play within one week. I know that's a glitch. I know that people have managed to get like Neymar and Messi on loan in the first year, which is just crazy. If you have any pictures already, or if you have any problems that you haven't pictured, definitely picture them and then send them to me on Twitter and I will include them in the video. Also just notice that Kasper Dolbeck is top of the Eredivisie goal scorers with 12 and David Neres is right behind and breathing down his neck with 8. It'll be fun to see who finishes top goal scorer of the Eredivisie at the end of the year because realistically the race is only between Neres and Dolbeck and both of them are going to be starting in today's game against Feno. But let's get into this game. Like I was saying guys, if you've got any problems in FIFA that you've ever screenshotted or took a picture of, Make sure you send it to me and I will include it in the video that I record either Thursday or Friday, which of course will be hashtag change career mode. And this is what a lot of YouTubers are doing to try and change career mode for FIFA 20. But let's go ahead and get into this game against Fenoid. We are in front of the home fans at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Let's get down to business and let's bag another three points. Big I'm game in the Eredivisie. I feel like I'm going to be saying that a lot. And as a Liverpool clubs, fan, it's coming up for you with live. Christmas coming, or has been, should I say, and we were top of the league. We were undefeated. Sadly, we did lose to Manchester City. But that's what every Liverpool fan is saying right now. Every game till the end of the season now is going to be a big game. And the reason I say this is a big game is not only are we playing one of the top clubs in the era of easy, we're also, right now, as it stands, undefeated. Now, a few people have mentioned in the comments section, Brad... Are you going to do the Invincibles and go all season without losing a game? Or at least losing a game in the Eredivisie? I'm not sure whether that's going to happen. But it'd be unbelievable if we caught first proper season. Playing on Legendary. It was a brand new series. Imagine we went the whole league without losing a game. That would be unbelievable. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'm not going to say that's what we're going to do. Right now, as Klopp would say... We're in present time, we have to focus on what's ahead, and right now it's Fenoid, so let's get this first half kicked off, it's Kasper Dolberg to kick it off, and let's see what damage we can do in this first 45 minute period, but we can't really be giving a ball away there, and I tell you what, they're coming forwards now, and that could be a big problem, let's go Vober, come on Vober, stay on them, let's pull them back here now, lads. they get a shot off Onano, a big save, 6 minutes in, nice ball in for Dolberg, it's a good ball, Dolberg's going to have to run for it, he does, clear the way, Play this in. Tadic. Nice little ball in again. Zayax there. Straight into the keeper's hands. Let's stay on this. Keep the pressure on. And there we go. It's played back to the keeper. Referee blows for half time. Fenoid are the first team in the last probably five or six games that are giving us a run for their money. We haven't scored. We haven't had many chances on target. They as well haven't had many chances. They seem a team that have come out today and are quite happy to either take a nil-nil draw or just edge one goal up and shut shop. We're going to have to make sure that that doesn't happen. We really need to push on in the second half, so let's hope we can do it in the next coming minutes because realistically, if we don't buy probably the 80th minute, they're going to shut shop and take a draw out of this. Neres wanting to get in behind. Let's play that into Neres. Neres in a good position. Back to Dolberg. Dolberg, touch. Finesse. Oh, it's a good strike. Go back to Ruben Loftus-Cheek to clear the way. Tadic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, going to hit it face time. Loftus-Cheek with a shot from nowhere. And he's broke the door on the nil-nil draw. Big strike from Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He did score his first goal for Ajax in the previous episode. He's now gone on to score his second goal for Ajax. Nice little bit of football. The laid off from Tadic. The keeper's got easily three or four players in his line of sight. Loftus-Cheek, you can see there, he can't see the ball. Loftus-Cheek gets a shot off. It's deep into that left side of the goal. It hits the side net and, and we're one nil up. That's exactly what we needed. And they're just playing it round at the back. I really don't know what Fenoid's game plan was here. one nil down, you'd think they'd come at us. They haven't, and I tell you what, guys, I do apologise. There's probably been no highlights in the last easily 20, 30 minutes of that game. 
we went 1-0 up and they just didn't do anything about it. They didn't come forwards. They didn't want to push on. They didn't look to come for a goal. It's like we went, it was 0-0. They shut shop and were happy to take the draw. They went 1-0 down and they didn't change anything up. They were happy to shut shop. And nothing come about that game. You can see there, a save, a save, a save, a goal. And that was it. No more highlights. The stats will definitely reflect that. Fenoid having three shots, all three on target. We had nine shots, eight on target. But after the 60th old minute, Fenoid done nothing. They shut shop and they stayed quiet, passing it around at the back. I really thought a team that won a challenge for the Eredivisie would have done a lot better than that. Right, and here we are, guys, back at the Central for the final time in today's episode. Now, luckily enough for us, we have six days off until our next game in the Eredivisie, which means the team, because as you can see, they're looking very tired, very fatigued right now. Hopefully, they will be all fully fit for the next game. And I had a little look at the calendar of December, and in 20 days, we play four games, which is absolutely mental. Three in the Eredivisie and one in Champions League. So we've got a lot of congestion coming up in December but once we get through December we get into January and our brand new striker Giovanni Simeone will be joining us and I'm hoping he is going to be an absolute beast up top with Dolberg I think for now I'm just going to rotate them carry on playing one striker because realistically look at what we're doing we have just scored or 24 goals have just been scored either from ourselves or our opposition in the last four games that is ridiculous. And although we only just beat Fenoid 1-0, they obviously come out with a game plan of just to hold out for the 0-0 draw or try and, you know, keep it, keep possession. And then if they get a goal, get a goal, go 1-0 up, shut shop and bag the three points. They didn't even manage to do that. We are finishing today's episode five points clear at the top of PSV in second position. We're 10 in. We've won all 10. We've got 30 points. We're already pretty much coming up to a third or a third of the way through the Eredivisie League. So hopefully we can keep this going. But that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around there, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.